We are back here with some more Pittsburgh Pirates franchise action here on MLB The Show 23. And we're going to get into a game here against the Texas Rangers. So we have a start here with both guys' acquisitions in the offseason that have struggled so far. Tyler Glasnow, we acquired him from Tampa Bay. Former Pittsburgh Pirate draftee in five starts. You see one and three with a 6.85 ERA. And Nestor Cortez coming over from the Yankees. Not very impressive either of the 5.09 ERA. So we'll see what we get going in this game. You can see the struggling Endy Rodriguez as well. So at the moment with Endy Rodriguez, as our lineup has been killing it, uh, I'm not sure what I want to do with him yet. I'm thinking of possibly just letting him ride it out, see what happens. But if he continues to struggle, there's a good chance that he might actually be sent down. But we'll see as we have a really good start here in this first inning. Bo Bichette's going to have a double. He has been a great acquisition, great start for Bo Bichette this year, and exactly what we want. Because sometimes, you know, you just never know, you know, how guys are going to react when they come over for free agency. You sign them to those big-time contracts, you are hoping it's going to turn out, and you never know, but Bo Bichette so far looking good. But Wyatt Freehan's going to ground out and end the first. And here's Tyler Glass now. It's been frustrating, the whip at 1.7. I mean, he's not walking anybody, but he is just getting hit up, and hopefully this is the turnaround. But this is a solid Rangers lineup. Seager is struggling. They get Schwarber in the offseason, a guy we know all about in that, pit, that uh, Philadelphia series. I mean, he uh, hit pretty much the series-ending home run in that eighth inning. So we'll see him as this one's ripped for a one-out base hit for here from Rosario. To get Texas on the board here right away here in this first thing. Don't have to worry about a no-hitter. You know, it's always good, you know. Don't want to keep going. At least you can get that no-hitter out of the way. Sometimes it takes the pressure out of the pitcher as well. As Corey Seager, the struggling hitter, goes down swinging there. And here comes Kyle Schwarber. In 304, acquired in the offseason through free agency. You know what he can do. And he's going to just look at it for strike three. We'll take that one. So Glasnow... Gets out of the first, no big deal, and let's go to the second inning. 2-2 Two -two pitch here to Tejada, and he is going to foul that one away. It's been an okay start here for Mark Tejada. Obviously, I uh, think he possibly rookie of the year contender, no doubt about it, as he is going to hit this one, and that one's going to get down for extra bases, gets to the wall. Tejada on his way to second base, and he is in there for a double. You just kind of forget that he's only, what, 19 years old? I mean, this guy has just been unbelievable. I mean, his career, his, uh, you know, the future is so bright for Mark Tejada. He has been absolutely fantastic. And see with this guy, Drew Gilbert. Great rookie season last year and backing it up. As hits this one into right field, and it is going to be caught there. So two, one away here in this second inning. But Gilbert, obviously now center field, all his. But he has been, been very, very good. We're hoping for this guy to really start to warm up. Andy Rodriguez finished the season last year. Henry Davis goes down. Played very well in the final two months. But here in his first full season, we are hoping for a full season in the bigs. He has uh, got off to a really struggling start. He grounds out there for the out. As Adolis Garcia comes into this game, nine home runs here early on in the season. We know the power he has. So you have to definitely... Be careful with him. 2-2 two -two with a man on first. And swing and a miss. Strike three. Great knuckle curve there by Glasnow. And there's two away. As here comes Sam Huff. Hits this one in the center. Gilbert's, Gilbert has got this one easily. There you go. Out number three. So, so far, both pitchers looking pretty good here early on. And we'll go to the bottom of half for the third inning. He's looking for another 1-2-3 inning. It is Glasnow. Pitch. This one's going to be fouled away. Working inside, a little bit in front, so maybe give maybe off speed here, 2-2. Two, two. And, oh, man, I thought it was a really good pitch. Really good take. 3-2 two, two pitch, and this one's popped up. Tamar Johnson, underneath of it, got it. And it's a 1-2-3 third, so both pitchers dominating so far. These are the kind of starts you're looking for for each team, especially with struggling pitchers. But you know what? They're you know they're veteran pitchers, so you expect me. Hey, maybe they might start to struggle, but you know what? You trust in them to get back to where they're used to be pitching. As Schwarber coming to the plate here with a man on first, nobody down in this fourth. One-two pitch, 
Ground ball, Glasnow's got it. Over to second base, Johnson up with the throw, and he's got a double play. What a start. Backhand grabs at one, four, three, double play. And two away now in this fourth inning, as this one's flown at a right. Tejada right at the wall. He's got it for out number three. So let's go to the fifth inning. We're looking for a first run. Can somebody get something on the board here, as Cortez has been very good too. And here comes Drew Gilbert to lead off this fifth inning. He does. He, he struggled last year against hitting against lefties, but he's been a little bit better this year. As that's going to get down for a base hit and get some speed on first base. But yeah, that was the only issue I'd say for Drew Gilbert last year. Really struggling against lefties, kind of out of the lineup most of the time. But not this year. He is definitely an everyday player. Here comes Cabrian Hayes, a guy that kills lefties. And he does it here again, just rips a base hit. I mean... He, he, you're not going to get much power out of him, man, but the dude can hit. He just, just can base hit after base hit, and you know what you're going to, he know, you know what's going to get in the field. I mean, he's fantastic. So first two men on here in the fifth as Rodriguez, the timing is there. It's just the power is not, and he flies out there easily to center field here for the first out in this fifth inning. Here comes Henry Davis, 0 for 1 so far. He's a bit of a slow start, obviously coming off the injury, so you don't expect him just instantly be there. As Davis hits this one, that's going to get down for a fair ball. One is going to score, and we're going to stay there at third base as Hayes into second base for an RBI double as Davis get the first run of the board here in this fifth inning. And yeah, same thing. I expect him to have a very good season. He wasn't. He was really good last year, I would say. For obviously, really first full full season back from injury. Definitely a guy that can hit you know twenty to twenty five home runs, give you some good defense. I mean, this lineup is definitely stacked. Speaking of, here's Tamar Johnson, a guy that's maybe starting to turn into the best player on this team. He really is. Chance to knock in some more runs. And this one flown into center field. That's going to be deep enough to probably score another one. Here comes the throw. Not even going to be any throw at the home plate. Davis goes to third. Johnson comes through with the sack fly. Add another run. 2-0 lead here in this fifth inning. And see if Bo Pichette can come through here with maybe an RBI single or even better here in this fifth inning. Pitch to Bichette. He'll take that outside for a ball. Bullpen rocking for Texas. I mean, this is the only bad inning right now for Cortez. He's really pitched very, very well. 1-0 pitch. And Bichette rips that through for a base hit. Davis is going to score. And we got a three-run fifth. This offense, I mean, you can slow him down for a little bit. But once we get going, it is tough to stop us. And it's just tough because it doesn't matter. One through nine, we're just going to bring it all the time. There's not really many guys in our lineup... Other than Andy Rodriguez at the moment, that is kind of an easy... I mean, he is not, he, even he is not really, I would say, an easy out. But man, you got to work to get outs against their lineup. You really do. And Glasnow, strike three to Garcia. And you hope for a nice shutdown inning here in the fifth inning after getting three. And that's looking like we're going to get... And he strikes out Sam Huff. So there you go. One, two, three, fifth for Glasnow. And let's go to the sixth. Now, his pitch count up there a little bit, right now at 80. So maybe he can work this six. If he can get a quick inning, I think we start him in the seven and see where we can go from there. One, two pitch. Strike three, looking on the outside half. Nice circle change. Glasnow has it working today. Maybe the best start of the season. Exactly what we needed. As Manuel Margot to the plate. 0 2 pitch to him. Swing and a miss on the slider for strike three. He is working in this game. And here comes Rosario to the plate. One for two so far. He'll take the pitch outside for a strike. No one to Rosario. And this one's ripped in. That's going to get through for a base hit. Nice try from Bo Bichette laying all out. So it's a two-out single here in this sixth inning. Texas trying to get back in it. And I tell you what, Corey Seager is definitely one of those guys. And just like that, he can get a two-run shot. But he has been struggling this season. 2-2. Two, two. He just goes looking. Strike three. Fastball high. Seager doesn't agree, but it was there. 
And Glasnow out of the six. That might be it for him as we will go to the bullpen. Another good acquisition. Now, 231 against lefties. I was hoping something a little bit better, but still. Still pretty good early on. And see how he deals with the lefties here. He's got Schwarber, ground ball. Got him there. Nice play by O'Neill Cruz. And he's got now, now Nathaniel Lowe coming to the plate. That's what, uh, you know, we were kind of missing last year. You know, Brock Burke comes in, pitches a pretty good season, gets hurt near the end. Is that going to be strike three to Lowe? And, you know, Peralta was okay, but we just didn't have multiple lefties. You know, I want guy, you know, I want at least two lefties in the bullpen, so we don't always have that one matchup. As that's going to be strike three, so it's a nice one, two, three, seven. Still with the three nothing lead going into the eighth. Here comes O'Neill Cruz to the plate. Works it to a 2-2 count. So far, 0 for 2 in this game. 2-2 pitch from White. And Cruz crushes this one. This one is long out of here. And Cruz, he might be off to the best season, I would say, power-wise. Already at number 9. Obviously at 20, what, 8 last year. And the way he is going, he might be on his way to a Maybe a 40 home run season. The power is being shown. The power that I thought that he was going to have, but maybe just didn't have it last year. But he's showing it this year. As he crushes that one out of here, and we know what the kind of speed he has. I mean, I'm thinking Tamar Johnson's starting to turn into the best player, but this guy might still be the best player on the team. and might just put up some off, you know, maybe some MVP numbers. We'll see. As here comes Wyatt Freehand. We know the power that this guy has. Takes that one for a ball. He's got seven home runs on the season. Averages up. A lot better from last year. 1-0 pitch to freehand. And he'll ground that one foul. Yeah, that's always good to see. You know, struggle with the average last year. He always had the power, but now he's actually getting a lot more base hits and takes that pitch up high. And we want to see him draw more walks. Get that on-base percentage. Just be an absolute dangerous hitter. 2-1 to freehand. And Freehand gets a hold of this one, kind of in that low area where lefties like it. This one is deep, and this one's getting it out of here. Back-to-back -back home runs. The power shown on this team. I'll tell you what, you got, I mean, you go down the list. I mean, even Drew Gilbert is showing the power this year. But you got Tamar Johnson at one. Obviously, a guy can hit 30 home runs easily. Then, Bo Bichette showed the power last year, 35 his career high. You bring now O'Neill Cruz, Wyatt Freehan, man. And even this guy, Mark Tejada, this one's going to be flown to the center field. It's not going to be back-to-back-to-back, -to -back -to -back, but Tejada has the potential to hit 35-40, to 40, no doubt about it. But back-to-back -back shots gives us a 5-0 lead. And here comes Sir Anthony Dominguez out of the bullpen. Trying to shut down this Rangers team. But Garcia is speaking of power. Rips this one deep. Rodriguez is going to give it a chance at the wall. And it's going to get over for a home run. Yeah. We shut him down early on. But Adolis Garcia, I mean, the dude is just jacked. And he can just crush the ball out of there. And he does there. Gets the Rangers finally on the board here in this eighth inning. Five to one. And obviously with the power of this Rangers team, I mean, a five-run lead can go away really quickly as a lose going to go down looking. I mean, I don't know why he's that mad. That pitch was right there. Fly ball. This should end the eighth. Gilbert's got it. So Rangers get one. Back to a four-run game. 5-1 as we go into the ninth inning. We've got a man on second, two away. Here comes Tamar Johnson to the plate. And we'll take that pitch on the outside corner for a ball. See what he's doing in runners in scoring position this year. 367. Outstanding. And fastball maybe just a little too high. Timing was there. It's just that's a tough, tough pitch to hit out of the park. And that'll be a fly out. So we'll go to the ninth inning. I think we leave Sir Anthony Dominguez in the game. We got uh, Helsley just in case. Something goes down here as Johnson's got that one. Runs that one down here. For out number one here in this ninth inning. Here comes Corey Seager to the plate. 0 for 2 so far for him. And swing and a miss there on the circle change. Whale out in front looking for that fastball. 0-1. Fouls away the fastball on the outside half. 
Let's go back to that changeup. And he'll foul away that one. So Seeger, tough. Obviously still tough at bat. 0-2, go fastball land, and he absolutely gets a hold of this one, and I think that one's going to go. So Seeger, tough at bat, you know, fouling away those outside half pitches. Then he's thinking, I'm going to look in, and he, we went right to him. And Seeger knocks this one out of the park. Solo shot, back to a three-run game. So Rangers not out of this one yet here. Still two outs to go in this ninth inning. And I guess we'll just leave Dominguez in at the moment, see what he does. Is Kyle Schwarber now coming to the plate? See how he deals with Schwarber here. 2-2. Two -two. And Schwarber rips this one deep. This one could go as well, and it's going to be off the wall. Gilbert up with it. Schwarber in his way to second base. He's got a double, and I think that'll be it for Sir Anthony Dominguez. Worst uh, outing of the season for him. Let's go to Ryan Helsley. Trying to get save number seven. Has yet to allow a run on the season. He has been fantastic. Just one walk and seven innings pitched. Let's see if he can get the save here. As Nathaniel Lowe takes the pitch for a strike. 0-1. And this is going to be ripped for a base hit. With Tejada playing so deep, Schwarber probably going to score easily here. He is just in there before the tag. Back to a two-run game, and now you got the tying run at the plate. So one bad pitch. If Marcus Simeon takes this deep, we got a tie game just like that. 3-2, he fouls away the 100-mile-an-hour fastball. Ground ball could end this game, though, and that's going to be a ball four. So now the tying run is on base. Go ahead, run, and Garcia at the plate. This, we have to be very careful, or this could be a disaster of a game. And this one's flown to center. This one's playable. Let's see if they tag here. Gilbert has a pretty good arm, and they're not going to test it. Not going to risk maybe a possible third out there. So two away now in this ninth inning. Garcia goes down, and here comes Sam Huff. Obviously not much of a power guy right now. So we got to go after him. Definitely have to. 0 for 3 in this game so far. 1-0 pitch. Fly ball in the center. Gilbert is there. And that'll do it. That'll be a victory here against the Rangers. Glasnow gets the win. Made a little interesting there at the end. Uh, Texas not going away easily. But that is a victory. And good to see that guy with a really, really good start. He was obviously a key to the season. We acquire him, try to really bolster our rotation. He has struggled so far, but really good start. And, man, yeah, the Cruz and freehand homers there in the eighth, that's the difference. Glass now, six innings, two walks, nine Ks, only two hits allowed. Second win of the season for him. It was the two and three, and we'll absolutely take that one, and uh, we'll continue to move on here. So we're... Getting about the end of uh, the month of April. We'll probably get into scouting, get through that series. Get pretty close, I would think, to the Philadelphia series. I'm not sure if we're going to get a game there today, but that's probably going to be next time. I would definitely get into that series. Obviously, the team that took us down in the NLDS last year, uh, they got a fantastic team so far. Winning eight straight. Right now, it's 17 and 10. They are leading the NL East. And I was looking through, Gene Tumula right now is hitting 393 in double A. Um, I think we got to give him a shot in triple A for sure. I know Brian Chang is right there. We could probably put him at DH. Uh, I think Kurt Weed is the guy we got to send down. Weed is really struggling at 180. Sawinski, 289, maybe bring him up. Zanino is struggling. Obviously, Chang. I don't think Brian Chang's going to be brought up this year. I think that's probably a next year thing. But let's bring Tamulo up to AAA. Yeah, I mean, you know, journeyman guy looking pretty good. I think see what he does in AAA. He definitely deserves it. He hit 393. There, yeah, we got to bring you up. No doubt about it. Kurt Wheat, I think we bring down. Send him back down to AA. He is struggling at the moment. And we'll make those moves. And let's get into some scouting. As we get another week here, week five of the scouting. So we got a few guys done here. Alberto Mercado, 76 to 91 potential right now. And our board, he's number 40. So maybe a B potential around a 50-some overall, only 18 years old. You'd probably have to take him with your second pick, I would think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, 
the overall is not going to be there, but the potential is there. Outstanding speed in stealing. I think you would just need work everywhere else. So right now, our draft rent board 62. Yeah, it just needs a lot. Of, I would say that's like a, like a work in progress type guy. And Lions, I think we keep him on here. He's only at uh, 40%. So let's try to find some other guys. Barney Zimmer. He has the 65 to 90 potential. Left-handed starting pitcher right now at our board at number 20. I think we go with him. Maybe Lionel Kraft, catcher. Same thing, high potential. Two-year junior college, 20 years old out of Venezuela. Right now at board at 65. Very good fielding, good reaction. Okay. Okay, hitter, and but uh, you know it'd be a you know maybe a second round pick that we possibly go with him if it's there. So I think Zimmer and Kraft will advance, and let's move on. So the Texas series, we lose game number two, take game number three, ten to two victory. Wyatt Freehand, look at all these homers. Bobochet, Freehand, Gilbert had two, Tejada had one, man, and Tyler Malley seven inning seven hits, one earned, gets the victory. So now we got a three game set here against the Diamondbacks. Let's go through this one. First one, and Bubba Chandler gets the win. He's looking pretty good this season. He really is. And looks like we're going to get a shutout in game number two. I think Pablo Lopez won complete. Hayes with a homer, and he did. Nine innings complete, nine Ks, only three hits allowed. Man, just continue a Cy Young year. And there is Glasnow with a fantastic start. Looks like he got the victory there. He did. So we're going to sweep the Diamondbacks. Bunch of doubles. Goes six and a third. Five hits, five Ks. Looks pretty good. That's a sweep. Get the day off here Thursday. And let's take a look at the month. So uh, Tanaj Thomas. I mean, I don't know if that's that rough of the month. I mean, it's just an area at four. I don't know about that. Okay. Hey, I'll take it. That's rough. So Winsky. He drove a 1981 bats, hitting 272. Winters, 3.380 ERA. Yeah, Quinn Priester is dominating. I, I'd really like to bring him up, but there's just no room. Bubba Chandler's pitching really, really well, and you can't send down Glasnow or Tyler Malley. I don't know, but look at our lineup. It is killing it. And I think Andy Rodriguez, unfortunately, he's just struggling. A 90 at bats, 178 average. I mean, he's only got a 275 on base, 508 OPS, only one home run. Um, I think we're going to have to send him down. I think for sure. I don't think he's going to be able to stay up here any longer. Um, yeah, just it's just not at the moment working. Look at Drew Gilbert hitting 330. Davis is struggling. Um, Tahada 261, just the two home runs. But yeah, Bladé's hitting 393 off the bench. Mercano's hitting 350, so we're getting a lot of production from our bench guys. That is great to see. It's just he can't really get a start, obviously. I mean, he can play a bunch of different positions, but I think what we're going to have to do is, like, Jack Sawinski's hitting pretty well down there, showing some power. Tamula, I mean, so far hitting really well in uh, AAA as well. g Bay's Bay's looking really well. Obviously, we know all about g Bay Bay can play pretty much any position you put him in. But he's hitting the ball very well, so maybe he possibly bring him up. Um, but I think Sawinski is what we're going to do. Obviously, he didn't play in the bigs last year. Got hurt for a while. Put up some really good numbers in AAA. High power numbers. Hit over near 30 home runs. He's got 8 here so far and 98 at bats. Uh, 957 OPS. So you know what? I think Jack Sawinski, let's move him up to the big league club. And yeah, Andy Rodriguez, send him down. So let's get into scouting. Here we go. Looks like Lines is up to 75%. Still not done. Potential right around an 82. And Kraft at 85%, 79 to 93 potential. I guess I'd rather just get 100% on these guys. Obviously, Zimmer's only at 45%. So let's just keep these guys for this week. We'll move on. And we ended up losing two out of three to Detroit. So, struggling a little bit there. And we got a game here against the Nationals down five to four. Got O'Neill Cruz coming to the plate. Let's jump into this game. See if we can have a nice comeback victory with Bo Bichette at first base. So, one away. Pitch to Cruz. And Cruz rips this one into center field. That's going to be trouble. 
Bichette on his way to third. He's rounding home. Cruz on his way to third base. He's in there. And we've tied this game in the ninth. Just like that, O'Neill Cruz triple, his fourth triple of the season. The speed, the power. Man, you really got him and I'm going to say L.A. De La Cruz in Cincinnati. Two maybe of the most exciting players in baseball, the same division. We'll see L.A. De La Cruz coming up in a little while. I can't wait to get into a game against Cincinnati. Um, always fun. And they're going to intentionally walk freehand, obviously, to try to set up the double play. Even though those guys are absolute struggle to face, sometimes it's just you just marvel at what they can do. It's like Shohei Otani. It's like, man, what are you supposed to do about it? The guy's unbelievable. So here we go. Jack Sawinski. He's got 429 average, one home run, three RBI, and the limited starts here since it's coming up. And now, here in a you know, few games back, has a chance to get the game-winning hit. And right now, at the speed at third and Cruz, all he needs is a fly ball. Now, Strasburg comes in. And interesting to see him in this lane of the game. And that pitch is going to be outside, obviously, near the end of his career. 2-2 pitch here to Jack Sawinski. Trying to make a good comeback here. And takes that one outside as well. So working to a full count. Probably could set in freehand here. And the pitch. Fly ball in the left field. This should be deep enough. Obviously with the speed of Cruz center field's coming over. There's going to be really no play at all. And Sawitzki comes through. Seeing with Cruz. And that's going to be a come behind victory here in the ninth inning against the Nationals. Nice job. Nice moment for Jack Sawinski. Obviously, he's been over a year since he's been up in the big leagues. And it looks like he's got a pretty good start. And there you go, a game-winning sack fly. And now, we got a bases-loaded situation here for Brian Hayes. And he's looking for the cycle, too. We're down 4-3. to three. Do we jump into this game, too? Let's jump into this one. Jumping into these games. So a double gets the cycle for Hayes, but obviously down a run, bases loaded here in the eighth inning. So this is a, a huge uh, opportunity for a couple big-time th things here in this eighth inning. 2-2 Two -two pitch to Hayes, and that one's going to be to right and caught. So no cycle and still a 4-3 game, and we are actually going to lose this game 4-3. to three. Bednar... Three hits, three earned, didn't get it out. Man, he has really struggled this season. Look at Reed Ridgeway. Got former draft pick. Bad news that go in that game. Wyatt Freehand, he's out for one to two weeks. Finger contusion. That's not what you want to see. But look at Gene Tamulo. He's hit 378 since being brought up to AAA. Now we need a first baseman. You know what? Why not? I think why not? I mean, he's 30 years old. Let's give this dude an absolute shot. What a couple weeks here for Gene Tamulo. Add him on the 40-man. Add him to the big league roster. Welcome to the majors. Now, he's probably not going to be up for very long, but hey, let's give this dude a shot, and I think we're going to get into his major league debut here. Let's get into this game against the Nats. Finish off this series, hopefully with a victory. Take the series two out of three. Man. Yeah, what a few weeks. Do kills in double A. You get the call to triple A. Just, just hit a clean 370 in triple A. Guy just happens to get injured, and there you go. Just like that, you're in the big leagues. Like I said, probably not for long. Once freehand comes back, he's probably going back down. But, man, see if he can take advantage. He rips this one into right field as that one is going to be caught. Hopefully we just get a hit here. I mean, like I said, sometimes with these player lock games, it's a lot of pressure. You know you're only getting maybe three or four bats, just like a player in real life. I mean, a little bit pressure. You want to get something on the board, especially in the debut game. We'll see. Tied up three in the fourth as they'll take the bitch up high for the ball. 1-0 pitch here for Tamulo. And this one's ripped, but it's going to be right at the second baseman there for the out. So not yet. Ground out. Obviously has the power and showing a lot of contact this year with a high average. As we head to the eighth inning, 0 for 3 so far. We got a 4-3 lead. And, man, swinging through that changeup just a tad bit early. It's there to hit. Just wait up a little bit. You can crush that changeup for sure. 0-1 pitch here from Irvin. And he'll take that for a strike. 
I mean, that's got to be so nerve wracking. Just just like that, you're up to the big leagues and you know coming up to the plate trying to get something. Man, that's got to be one heck of a feeling, especially you know for a 30 year old. You've been in the minors for a while. That's got to be a great feeling. As he rips this one into center field, it is carrying back, but it is caught for the out. So, Gene Tumulo, unless we get another bat here, that might be it for his debut 0 for 4. But we do get the victory. Take 2 out of 3 against the Nats. That's all you got to do. Just keep winning series. Obviously, the Cubs, they are right there in first place. We're right there with them, but... Another series victory, and a four to three looks like Hayes hit a home run. Cruz had a couple of hits. Looked like it was a three-run shot, maybe. Santana six innings, six hit, three earned, three Ks. But Loisaga comes in, gets the win. Yeah, we're two games behind Chicago. They're twenty-eight and ten. They're really good this year. They are really good right now. Twenty-six and twelve. Brewers aren't bad at twenty and eighteen. Even Cardinals and the Reds. I mean, they're not too bad here early on. This is a pretty good division. Phillies 22 and 16. We'll see them. They finally have actually dropped off just a tad bit after winning, you know, the games they won in a row there. But you got the Braves at 19 and 18. Braves have so much talent. Dodgers at 24 and 14. Giants at 23 and 15. You're pretty much, I would say, normal teams. Brewers there. Yankees lead the uh, AL East, but that's all very, very close. I mean, the Red Sox only four games out. Guardians lead that division. You're defending champs. White Sox only six and a half out. It's still, you know, very early on, obviously. And then the Mariners lead the West over a half game over the Angels. Astros actually in last place at the moment. Let's go over some league leaders here so far. So it looks like you got Bo Bichette right now at number five, hitting 346. Yeah, he's having a great season. Great to see. He's tied for the league lead in hits in the National League at 54 with Trey Turner. There's Vladdy Jr. right there at number two. Uh, let's see, home runs. You got uh, Willie Adamas with 12, Acuna with 12, Cruz with 10, I'm telling you. And you got Freehand with nine, and he's obviously out for the next couple weeks. I think Cruz is going to hit like 40. I think so. That's what I'm thinking. Tamar Johnson has eight. I mean, if Freehand can stay healthy. I mean, Drew Gilbert has seven this year. I did not expect that. I mean, if, he can, if Freehand can stay healthy... We could have two guys around 40 home runs. There's no doubt. Here's Tamar Johnson and Cruz right there at number two and three. Freehand at number six. It's good to see wide freehand. I, you know, you just find guys like this on free agency, and he's such a power hitter. Has a great, really, you know, month of September coming up. Look at Bubba Chandler, man. Six wins. He's right there. Bubba Chandler having a great season. Won the spot in spring training. Looking very, very good. But yeah, Wyatt Freehand, and then obviously you see him struggle last year, and you're just like, oh man, I hope this isn't like a you know one-time thing. And just to see him come back, and now the way he's playing this year, that is awesome to see. And the way this guy's pitching, Bubba Chandler, whew. and Quinn Priester, like I said, he's dominating AAA. I just don't know what to do with them. I want to bring him back up and really give him a shot, but. Who do you take out of the rotation? There's nobody to really take out of it. Maybe, maybe uh, Mally. That's all I can think of. I mean, that's the one guy. I, you know, I'm not going to get really glass down for the trade. Mally, we signed, obviously, to a couple-year deal. But maybe he's the guy that worse comes to worse. You just trade him away, pick something up because you got, you know, Priester sitting there. And then you got so many guys in uh, AAA in the minors that are dominating, like Will Cousins, Anthony Solimeto. I mean, these guys, it's, we're going to have to figure out real soon what we're going to do. So, yeah, that might be the scene. I mean, if, if Priester just continues to dominate, there might not be much of a chance. We might, we I mean, choice. We have to try something. But I think that's going to do it for this one. I think we'll end it here, and then obviously next time we'll get into that series against Philadelphia. Try to get a little bit of revenge after the playoffs last year. Battle of PA, Battle of the Turnpike will definitely continue. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the support. I really appreciate it. Hit that like button. Subscribe for more. I will see you in the next one. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.